a small, as actually at a fraction of what the, their other solution costs. They're able to run it actually as fast as their physical instance uh, for DR, and they're extraordinarily happy with their result. Okay, so, so Chris, what, what architecturally makes your cost point better than what we've been seeing on the market It's before? a very, there are a, a number of confluences. Right. One of them is it's, it's origin and focus is in VMs, right. so that's allowed us to simplify okay, a lot just, of things. Just to clarify, so when you say VMs, is that VMware exclusive or? It's, it's we're hypervisor agnostic. Okay. Uh, right now, the focus is primarily on VMware because oh, that's where most yeah. of the business is. But Absolutely. We will, they're, they're, you, they're the lion's share of the marketplace, yeah. <laughs> but we, you, we don't ignore that there are other competitors correct. out there. And, sure. and we'll be supporting other hypervisors Okay, in the fair future. enough. So, so, so focus built fo for virtualization. was a key simplification for us. Right. It's this combination of inline deduplication yep. and compression. Okay. And thin provisioning, what you can get yeah. through the NFS right. with Flash. Flash, okay. That, yeah, that, so, so all the buzzwords you've got in there, yeah. uh, all you were missing was cloud, and, and you would have a bingo. It, we but. actually, if you look on our website, you will not see the C word anywhere. No, I mean, it, all or the, the S word, Or the S word with the strategic word. Yeah. Uh, neither of the, those have both been banned from our vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> we, we set out to minimize but the But you fluff. are innovative. <laughs> uh, you might see innovative on there. Yeah, I guess. Sorry, guilty. guilty. It, it, it's okay, but, <laughs> but you know, we... we, we Interesting technology, definitely something that we yeah. so cla uh, yeah flash dedupe compression and, and you work out the, the order of the compression and the and the dedupe to yeah. make sure that based, that all works yes, together. Yes, and based um, on a per VM. So so and the, the typical the typical yeah. example yeah. is really interesting in that case. Right. So there's a, there's a situation where they had a terabyte financial footprint. So the Oracle logical size was a terabyte, and I guess if they deployed it with a, a terabyte of SSD. It would work fine, right. but that would have just blown through their budget, so they, they weren't going to do that. In our case, because of the way our system is architected, the on-flash footprint of that terabyte database is 177 gigabytes. Right, and how much flash do you have in your system? We have system? a terabyte. We have so, a terabyte. You do, so, you know, but a terabyte of flash in your system and we're isn't going to blow out the price like it would in some of those traditional sandboxes? Correct. And, we're, okay. there's a bunch, and there's a bunch of, I don't want to go techno on you, but there's, yeah. a, there's a bunch of reasons why that's the case. Okay. Um, but in, the, in that particular instance, it's a great, great illustration. So there's our, our system is supporting this DR instance of their production database, and it's only consuming 17% of the flash, mm. and 100% of the workload is coming from flash. That's fantastic. So uh, going back to this uh, question of the problems in the marketplace, there must have been a sort of broader philosophy you had behind putting all of this time and effort into developing this product. What were the key problems in this virtualization area that, that you saw there, and you know, how are you trying to, uh, to tackle those? The key issues that we saw, from the, if you look at it from a storage end of the equation, it, they come down to complexity, which is the rat's nest of connections between VMs and the different LUNs and objects underneath, and cost is, is almost always in there somewhere, and um, the ability to have the thing combined and get stuff done quickly. So it's, it's, it's speed of execution, complexity, and the cost of the system usually were the things that caused people lots of problems. So we, we set out to address all three of those issues. Okay. Well, we, we uh, were talking to um, one of the uh, House of Brick recently mm -hmm. um, about the problems they came across. And they said 50% of the problems that they came across were how the how the storage was set yes. up. Yes, right. So are you familiar with House place? of Brick? So they're yes. actually a large integrator yes. helping to virtualize Oracle, which is Oracle. a pretty really yeah. interesting use yes. case. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and that's actually, I would say that's on the low side. Yeah. I mean, it, it, at VMworld, you guys read VMworld. So at yeah. VMworld, <laughs> it, it, I don't know, what, what's your estimate? 70, 80% of the problems that you heard about in the sessions were about I.O., oh. and most of those were mm. related to storage. Yeah. There's an yeah. adage, you hear this, you talk to customers over and over, and, and if there's a performance escalation, storage is guilty until proven innocent. I mean, that, that's just, that's just, just, just the name of the game. That's just yeah. the way it works. Yeah, and, it, and it's no longer about running out of uh, capacity so much as performance solutions that, that can really yeah, it was working help for great. the new virtualized Something environment. Something changed, converged. it yeah. blew up. 
Okay, now we're in Where's Waldo? So, so, so uh, talking so. about that, when something goes wrong, and there's some interesting stuff that you guys yeah. have in your product, because, you know, I, I always hear in a virtual environment, you know, we shove a bunch of stuff in there and something goes wrong, and then yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, the sto- it's the storage issue, and okay, let me sort out, you know, my virtual environment versus my physical environment, and h- how do I fix the storage? Yeah. So why is it different with your product? It's, it's completely different bec- for, as you know, for uh, multiple reasons. But the core reason is that there are no objects in our system other than virtual machines and virtual disks. Okay. There's no other hidden indirection layer. So, so no LUNs? There's no LUNs. Raid groups, you know? No raid groups. Okay. There's no weird stripes. There's no volumes. There's none of that stuff yeah. exists. So if you, you go into even our most detailed molecular management interface. Well, you have some files there, don't you? Um, d- yes, but, but the objects that are, are, are controlled are V-disks. So and we, we take full advantage of that all the way up and down the stack. Yeah, well, I, I, I kind of like it because there's always that problem when you abstract an environment or put a layer of abstraction in between. And if something goes wrong, somebody has to that generalist that stuff just worked and he has to go yeah. fix it. But you guys change the way that you map to storage. So it's there's a there's a famous saying I can't remember who says some some professor at, said you know there, in computer science. Uh, a, an additional layer of indirection can solve any problem, right. except for the problem of having too many in- layers of indirection. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, but, but you you're building this product, as I understand, on on a, the NFS connection yes. with uh, VMware, and that's probably not the area that I, I'm surprised that you chose yes. that because of all the areas uh, in VMware, it's probably maybe the least developed? uh It's been, uh, certainly, I I think it would be, as an observer, it would be fair to say that NFS functionality has lagged the block access. There's no question about that. From talking to people inside VMware, that gap has been closing. If it been closed by NetWare, it would have been a different story, (laughs) wouldn't it? (laughs) I suppose. Uh, But, you know, that has been closing, and and certainly internally, my my understanding is they're being treated as, as peers, as first class equals yeah so and, and, and absolutely so, so you're comfortable it, yeah. with oh, very. L- l- but we're not I mean we're not area. the reason we chose NFS was not I mean w- we actually can probably will do iSCSI connectivity that, there's nothing there's nothing about the protocol per se it just was well supported it was a straightforward process and allows thin provisioning. It's the simplest pass to thin provisioning up front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that, yeah. That's the reason that we would, if, if there was blah, 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 connectivity that offered similar, I mean, we're not wedded to NFS or dependent upon anything in particular right. there, okay. other than it was an existing client that we could connect connect with. Mm. Yeah, but both both NFS and iSCSI map more naturally to uh, virtual environments than something like Fiber Channel, which took a while to kind of develop. Yeah, I mean, uh, over yes. The years. And, and Fiber Channel solutions are doing great today in that environment. Performance enhancements have been there, but true, NFS has been there forever and, and therefore, you know, yeah. and we've seen some good growth. And the NFS solution is very robust. I mean, mm. the client actually works very well. Okay, so so you, you've, you've got, uh, you, you, so your founder came from VMware. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about the rest of the team? Sure. So we have other folks that came from VMware, uh, Citrix. I, myself, I was at NetApp for 10 years. I was the vice president of product management there. Uh, we have, uh, you guys met this morning, Ed Lee, one of our architects. Who was, Great guy. Who yeah. was uh, from Data Domain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wrote the original RAID driver wow. uh, at Berkeley uh, back in the day. So has a lot of experience with that. Uh, uh, Pratik Wadher, our vice president of engineering, was also Data Domain. He was the guy that made the tr- trains run on time. And that product's so easy to, to use. We have uh, other folks from Brocade did some of the original architecture work there. So it's a it's actually this combination of folks with deep virtualization experience and storage experience, which I think has led us to do something that is obvious in retrospect, but nobody else has done. And I, it was that combination that allowed us to bridge over those two gaps, I think. We, we've been expecting, looking for other people to do something similar and have really been surprised that there's been nobody else that's connected the dots. But I think it's that combination of deep expertise on both ends that led us to this point. So We, so we were talking to uh, some, of, uh, some of the CIOs recently, and one in particular, um, and we were asking them, what would you do differently about virtualization? Mm-hmm. And, and he, one of his answers was very interesting. He said, we should have reorganized ourselves mm-hmm. and got away from the storage gurus, the database gurus, yeah. the uh, server gurus, and, and really made them generalists and made them responsible for the whole got, system. Got to break the silos. Got yeah. to break the silos. I mean, because the, the, is, business, is, that the a, business is that a constraint to your business, the, these silos? Well, 
anytime you're trying to bring in a new way, I'm, I'm avoiding using the paradigm word, but you know, <laughs> any new approach to something is obviously, it, it breaks glass. I mean, and organizational issues are one of the key issues you, get, you have to overcome. So uh, it certainly is unfamiliar. And yet, I would say of the people that we've talked to, the folks that understand virtualization get it immediately. Right. Yeah. And the people that are writing the checks get it immediately. They understand how this can have a profound impact. And at the end of the day, as we were discussing this morning, at the end of the day, it's applications that drive the business. And so if you can deploy an application where from literally from top to bottom, you're all speaking the same lingua. And the only objects that exist, all, all the way from the application layer, all the way down to the, the bits that are sitting in disk someplace, are the same objects. You can actually talk to each other. We had a fascinating, I had a fascinating interchange. I w wasn't there, but a reporter by our SE who deployed our first system at a, one of VMware's largest companies. We have not been able to announce this yet. Mm -hmm. But we had a fascinating interchange, and our SE asked Bo both the storage admin and the VM admin were standing there and asked the, them, so how big are your VMs? And the storage admin said, well, our VMs are 500 gig because that's the size of the data store that they right. create. Yep. And so he's done. I, I, 500 gig, you know, away you go. And the VM admin verbally slaps him. I mean, by, by this guy's Sandeep's account, he basically goes, no, you idiot. Our, our VMs are like typically like 25 gig. So here you have an extraordinarily sophisticated customer, and these two people work together all the time, and they're not speaking the same language. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one, yeah. one of the storage guys, yeah. I mean, and is working hard. I mean, there's a lot of work associated with presenting that virtual data store object, and yet to the VM admin, they recognize that as a necessary but not sufficient first step. Right. In this in this whole process, so so, so it's, it, you really see your product going in, and the virtualization admin can can really just take yes. care of that whole storage environment. Not necessarily putting the storage admin out of business, no, but he can manage much larger environments uh, and, and do. Yeah, more I think so. I think I think managing multiple nodes and and uh, capacity planning and and storage is not all going to be in VMs. Yeah. I mean, no, we're no, we right. are <laughs> proudly a niche player. It happens to be yeah. a big niche and it's growing, but we're only in VMs. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It, it, it's some of the challenges we see in IT in general is, you know, if, if they don't get things done the way, you know, you, you've got the, the lines of business that are just grabbing a credit card and going out to yeah. Amazon. So now you've got another technology that can help that virtualization admin uh, really do their job uh, yeah, more efficiently. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned uh, Amazon. We yeah. have a, another customer who's actually running us in production now, and they have actually pulled their a portion of their workload out, out of Amazon and are now created their own internal private cloud in large part because of the radical shift in economics that we present to them. So it's now cost effective for them to deploy their own private cloud where previously the, the cost was just out of sight and it made more sense to pay the, leasely, the monthly fees to Amazon to get this hosted externally. And they have a very interesting approach to HA in, in their environment. Uh, which, you know, I think with a startup, why would you run a startup in, in a production environment? Well, the reason is that they actually have bought three of our systems and are, have multiple copies of the VMs on each one of these nodes. And so at, at the application layer, they have application HA, which is really what you want. And, and what applications are they running on that? They're web-facing apps. Web-facing apps, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're um, obviously very new in there. Yeah. Um, you must be working on a few other things uh, to enhance your product. Yes. Uh, what sort of things uh, aren't there at the moment you're working sure. hard to get? The two key future directions for us are, one is making multiple nodes even easier to manage. I mean, right now, if you want to expand, scale our systems, you scale them the same way you do with the ESX host. You run, you run out of performance capacity or you storage capacity, yeah. you add another eight and a half terabyte data store. Right. We, we're working on ways to make that easy with large numbers of data stores, which obviously storage providers are particularly interested in. So Great. we've talked to folks so, like that. So let's just do a quick reset. So uh, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon, here with Chris Bennett of Tintree, uh, yes. uh, and uh, uh, David Floyer of Wikibon, uh, talking about some new approaches to uh, storage specifically for virtualization environments. And uh, w you know, Chris, one of the things we talked about earlier I want to just touch on yeah. a little bit more is uh, you know, it's not so much about capacity, but it's about performance. Yes. And I think from a management standpoint, um, I heard something from you that I'd never heard yes. about latency and IOPS and how I can really yes. get visibility. Can, can you fill us in on Absolutely. that? Absolutely. So 
So, so one of the things, uh, there are a bunch of things that are really cool. So it's, it's really fun. So on our UI. You, you, you like your job, I'm guessing. It's really you're fun. having a blast. I'm, having a, public, I'm having a great so. time. It's really fun. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to. Uh, I'm guessing marketing guys don't like the stealth mode too much. Yeah, it's not so much fun. <laughs> so on our UI, there are two fuel gauges. One is the traditional for storage devices, which is a, how much of the capacity have you consumed. The other one is very innovative, which is a performance fuel gauge. And as long as both of those fuel gauges are green, you can keep adding VMs to this node. So, so, so what do I get on the, what, what am I measuring from performance standpoint? It's actually a complicated algorithm okay. internally. It's some combination of how many flash ops, how many disk ops, how much uh, footprint you've already taken so in the IOPS flash. and I believe there's latency also. Yes. So I'm sorry okay. to answer, answer your direct ahead, question. Yeah. So let's say you have a performance problem and yeah. you need to diagnose what's going on. Right. You can drill into our UI just with a couple of clicks on that particular VDisk or that VM and you can see what the latency is real time yeah. as well as what the latency has been for the last seven days on per VDisk. Yeah. You can see that information. No, that, that, that's awesome. That's I, I know, you know yeah. we've gotten a lot of feedback that, right, you know, we, storage is, is broken, and how, how do I go and find that? Is it better now? Is it better now? Let's throw yeah. some more hardware yeah. at it. Let, let's do something else. Now we understand we, at the application So, so the level, storage guy can actually say, on, so. it isn't me. You've yeah. done something uh, yes. in the day. Yeah, or so here, here it is. It. <laughs> here it is. It's, <laughs> it's half millisecond. Right. What more do you want? <laughs> uh, any, any questions? <laughs> you know, uh, away you go. So uh, we've had numerous customers, I don't want to exaggerate, several customers in my presence, while they're seeing the demo, essentially say, I've been asking for this for years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, this is, I want to be able to see this kind of information. I haven't been able to see it before. So, 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 so Chris, to lead us out, can you tell us where we can find more information on Tentry? www.tentry.com. And can you spell that for us? T-I-N-T-R-I. -I. And, and the I has a little thing over it, right? It's actually Tentry, actually this, it's an accent. Uh, Tentry is Gaelic for lightning. So, there you go. So in, in Gaelic, yeah. it's actually with, has the accent on the final I. Okay, so, uh, so check out Tintry.com. We look forward to uh, following you. your progress. Thanks, Thank guys. you for joining us here at theCUBE. My pleasure.